Well, here in Britain, councils love to plant cherry trees because in the spring they look very pretty with all the blossom on them. Uh, but uh, most people don't realise that actually you get a very good crop of fruit from them in the summer. And I am often asked when I'm out picking cherries, um, people will come up to me and ask me what I'm doing, and they don't realise that actually there's this great free crop of cherries out there. Now this year we've been picking two sorts of uh, cherries at the local parks. Uh, this is a very sweet variety which we've been eating raw, but we'll also be using these, we'll be bottling these tomorrow, and that'll be, that's the subject of another video that we'll be doing shortly. And uh, the bulk of the cherries we've been picking are these uh, black cherries. Uh, and we'll be making a jam with them and that is what this video is all about, it's about making cherry jam. Now something you need to remember about cherries which is that they're low in acid and they're very low in pectin as well so they're two conditions that you actually need for jam making. Uh, without them your jam won't set so to make cherry jam you need to add either lemons or apples to it and actually we're doing both because it's quite a nice balance to it. So to make cherry jam this is what you need to do. Right what you need to do is put into your pan, into your jam pan, all your cherries. Now we're using about uh, two uh, kilos of cherries and at this stage weights are about proximate uh, uh, because the, the, the actual measuring comes later on in the process. But you can also put in um, old lemon peel as well. You also need to add in uh, for the for about two kilos of cherries, add in th about three large uh, cooking apples, coarsely chopped, and then you need to get your lemons and uh, squeeze them like so, and just drop them in as well, and just make sure they're all nicely squeezed out and then add heat and in the process I shall add the rest of my lemons and then you just got to bring this to the boil. What I forgot to mention a moment ago was water and uh, you need to add sufficient water to cover all the fruit. Once it's boiled for a couple of hours you then need to strain it. Once you've let everything strain for about 24 hours, you then need to put the pulp back into the jam pan and cover it with water and reboil it. After you've reboiled the pulp for about 10 minutes, you've then got the, uh, the job that's going to require a bit of elbow grease because effectively you're going to need a sieve like this. You're going to have to press the pulp through the sieve to extract from it uh, the fruit puree. Well, we um, strained the um, the pulp through the sieve into the uh, the bowl with the juices in that we'd strained off yesterday, and that's what we've got. Now that lot needs to be measured, and then it goes back into the jam pan. And uh, you just think along the terms of uh, for every liter of liquid that you've now got, uh, you need one kilo of sugar. You may find that. Uh you get a bit of a sort of foam layer forming. Uh, easiest way to deal with that is just to spoon it off and uh, throw it away. After you boil it for a few minutes, you need to check that it's reached its setting point. And the way to do that is to put a, a little dollop of it onto a plate and leave it to cool for a few minutes. And if it forms a skin, and indeed you can just uh, see that skin forming there mm. and you know it's um, ready to go into the jars mm. <laughs> so there we have it 12 jars of cherry jam. Uh, we 
picked about two kilos of cherries to make that uh, cherry jam. Now the point is that those cherries are free to pick. Uh, there's loads of them out there at this time of year. It's, it's early August now and it's a free crop. You know, councils plant cherry trees all over the place. I was talking to somebody the other day who had a cherry tree in her back garden and didn't realise that um, she could pick the fruit and, and eat it or use it in cooking. And I'll finish on my final point. Down the road from us in, in the village down there there's a big supermarket with a big car park outside it and all around the car park uh, are cherry trees planted. And you can go into that supermarket and you can pay a fortune for a tiny little tub of cherries or you can get a carrier bag and just fill it with free cherries growing all the way around the, the, the car park. So which would you prefer to do? There's loads of wild fruits out there to be picked and it's a free larder, so go for it.